Research is a fantastic contribution to society in its own right. It advances our knowledge about humans and society at large. But if you really want to make a difference, you need to disseminate your knowledge outside academia too. My name is Anna Forsberg and I'm a business coach at KI Innovations with a special focus on social innovations. In this seminar, I will give you some ideas on how to create impact from your research-based knowledge. I will also give you some ideas on how to track and evaluate that your activities are creating the desired impact. Welcome. We're all aware of the many challenges we're facing in the world today, such as the climate crisis, conflicts, migration, and not least health challenges related to lifestyle-related diseases and an aging population. These challenges have been summarized by the UN in the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Goal number three specifically addresses health. Each goal has subcategories that in turn have very precise targets and indicators of change. There are several other goals that address human health, such as no poverty, reduced inequalities, clean water and sanitation. The Sustainable Development Goals is a useful framework when communicating what challenges you are addressing within your research. The world has seen challenges before, and science has proven to be a powerful tool to change our societies to the better. Take, for example, the discovery of antibacterial properties in a specific mold, discovered by Alexander Fleming in 1928. The drug was used in large scale 14 years later during the Second World War, and has since then saved millions of lives. But it wasn't the discovery of antibacterial properties of the mold that saved lives. It was the process of making a drug out of it, a drug that could be mass produced. It took 14 years for Fleming's discovery to save lives. 14 years could be considered a long time, but on average it takes 17 years from research to practice. 17 years. In a rapidly changing society with pressing challenges, we all need to work towards broader access to research-based knowledge and to speed up the pace of implementation. So what do you need to do to create impact from your research-based knowledge? First of all, you need to package your knowledge so that it becomes accessible to the public. This could be done through publications, products and services, processes and organizational innovations, methods and tools, frameworks and standards, and there are many other ways to package your knowledge. But you also need a vehicle or a method to bring your packaged knowledge out to society. This could, for example, be publications in scientific journals, popular science communication, influencing policies, standards, laws and regulations, or attitudes, perceptions, beliefs, and theories. You could also teach your knowledge outside academia, or set up a collaboration with organizations, companies, or individual users. Another way to go is to out-license your knowledge. You can also set up an organization or a company. Often you need to do several of these activities to really reach out and to draw attention to your innovation. And you also need to adapt your activities depending on who you are talking to and how your stakeholders can be reached most effectively. You should also consider what organizations or people would be best in bringing your innovation out to society. Maybe this is not you. Maybe it's better to team up with someone who already has channels to the users and your specific target groups. If you choose to start your own organizations, there are many different business models to go with. One is, of course, a traditional for-profit company. Another option is to become a social entrepreneur, where you apply the same business logics to your activities, but all or most of your profits are reinvested in the company. A third option could be to start a non-profit, mainly funded by public and private subsidies and donations. 
all of these options have different pros and cons, and it's wise to take some time to really think about your best option, depending on how you would like to fund your activities, who you would like to collaborate with, and how you want to communicate your activities. So when you've packaged your knowledge and you have a vehicle to bring it to the public, how do you know that your strategy really works? The first and maybe easiest way is to collect data on your quantifiable direct results. This could, for example, be number of users, number of clinics applying your method, number of downloads if you have an app, for example. This is a good way to measure that your innovation is really reaching out. And these are also numbers that potential investors would be interested in. How well are you reaching out and how large is the potential market? This is an example on how the organization Save the Children reports on their outputs. For example, how many people have been reached by their interventions? How many have been using their tools or visiting their website? These quantifiable results aren't always equaling desired effects for your target groups. That is, is your innovation really creating the positive change that you were aiming for? To give you an example, aid organizations have invested large sums to prevent malaria by distributing mosquito nets, specifically on the African continent. The problem is that, for example, in East Africa, these nets have been primarily used as fishing nets. As the mesh of the nets are so small, they catch smaller fishes that are food for larger fishes and that are also important for the marine grassland ecosystems. In the long run, the use of mosquito nets for fishing could therefore lead to food insecurity, greater poverty and depleted ecosystems. This example shows the importance of following up on your effects, even the potential negative ones, and to really know your target groups, what are their most pressing needs. In his seminar, my colleague Mats will tell you more about the importance of a proper stakeholder analysis. By setting up indicators of change, you can create a strategy and a plan on how to measure and follow up on your effects. This can be done, for example, through interviews, observations or surveys. Feedback from your users is also an efficient tool for communication as a complement to your quantifiable outputs as mentioned before. By using quotes from users, you can add a qualitative, more personal description of the effects of your innovation. You can also quantify these outcomes, as in the example shown here. Here are also two examples of companies using quotes from their users in their communication. But make sure that the facts that you're stating are true and validated. This is an electric scooter company claiming that their product is contributing to less traffic and cleaner air. But when asking the users, most of them are using the scooters instead of walking, biking or traveling by public transport. It could therefore be suspected that the scooters aren't decreasing traffic and might even lead to increased CO2 emissions and, on top of all, less physical activity. Claiming inaccurate facts could backfire on your business. The final step on your impact journey is to evaluate what value your innovation is creating on a societal level to the people, planet and to economy. This could, for example, be decreased costs in healthcare or increased awareness about the specific condition. You can strengthen your theory about long-term effect through available evidence, statistics, research pilots or insights about your users. Usually there is a time perspective here where outputs are the direct results from your activities while the societal impact happens in a longer time period. As with outputs and outcomes, it's important that you use your long-term effects in your communication. This is an example from a company's website that have received support from us at KI Innovations. To evaluate how your innovation's ultimate impact relates to the total costs, health economics can be used. 
Health economic evaluation may be defined as a comparative analysis of alternative courses of action in terms of both their costs and consequences. In order to claim that your innovation is cost efficient, you need to compare it to another intervention or solution. When comparing the effects of different interventions in relation to costs, the differences can be shocking. One example are these three initiatives, which all aim for girls in developing countries to stay longer in school. For every thousand dollars spent, this is how many school years were added for the girls in the target group. Financial support through scholarships. Extended the number of years in school on a group level with 1.5 years. Giving free school uniforms to the girls extended their years in school with 0.9. Deworming the girls so that they do not get sick gave 119 years extra school years. What I've described in this lecture is a framework called theory of change. This is one way to theorize on, follow up and communicate your impact. There are of course many other frameworks to use, but the most important thing is that you have a strategy for your impact journey. Many organizations, especially within the social field, are now including impact reporting alongside their financial annual reports. It is becoming more common that traditional investors are asking for social return on investment too. So my recommendation to you is use your impact statement and your impact results in your communication. And be transparent, talk about your failures too, and what you're doing to improve your results. So what have we learned? By measuring and following up on your impact, you can make sure that your innovation really solves the societal challenges that you want to address. Give you and your team members valuable insights on what works and what doesn't. Communicate to your stakeholders that your activities are giving the desired effects. And not least, to attract investors and allocate resources to be able to scale the activities that are working. Thank you very much for listening and if you need help with your impact journey, don't hesitate to contact me.